Welcome to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette, with your host Steve Garrett, MC and DJ at one of the largest Corvette weekends in the country, Corvette Fun Fest, president of the Corvette Club of Kansas City, Missouri, and radio disc jockey at the number one radio station in Kansas City for over 40 years. Here's Steve Garrett. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by Mid-America Motorworks. Car show season is here. Get your Corvette ready by shopping over 60,000 Corvette-specific parts and accessories at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. I appreciate you tuning in. You can listen to Corvette Today on all podcast platforms. You can also listen on your smart device. Just say Alexa or Hey Google, play the podcast called Corvette Today, and you're connected. Also, visit the Corvette Today website. It's corvettetodaypodcast.com. And while you're there, make sure you visit the Corvette Today merchandise store. You can also sign up for Corvette Today emails, notifications, and updates at corvettetoday.ck.page. And don't forget, join the Corvette Today Facebook group. We have over 3,500 members, and I'd love to have you as a member as well. And don't forget about the YouTube channel now for Corvette Today. See your favorite Corvette Today podcasts now on YouTube. First, I'd like to thank our flagship sponsors of Corvette Today, Aerolari Wheels, a true forged wheel with over 20 unique design styles to choose from for your C8 and wide-body versions of the C7, C6, and C5 Corvette. It's an absurd value starting at only $19.88 for a set of four fully forged wheels. And now use the new promo code CT111. That's CT111 and get $100 off your purchase. Visit aerolari.com. That's A E R O L A R R I.com with the new promo code CT111 for your $100 discount. Also, midenginecorvetteforum.com, the forum that focuses on the new mid engine C8 Corvette. Meet a lot of fellow Corvette enthusiasts like yourself at midenginecorvetteforum.com. Also, a shout-out to CanadianCorvetteForum.com, welcoming Corvette owners from around the world. Hey, it's time to get the latest Corvette news and headlines with my pal Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. As you know, Keith is a regular guest on Corvette Today. He's here twice per month, every other week, to keep you up to date on what's happening with America's sports car. Keith, it's always great to have you back on the show. Welcome back. And this is a monumental podcast because this week starts year number three for Corvette Today. It's an amazing milestone, Steve, and we're just glad to be part of it. This has been fun to watch. We go to these shows and people come up and say, before be like, I get your email. And now it's like, I really love hearing you and Steve talk on the podcast. It's a lot of fun. Glad that people are listening and enjoying the YouTube video as well. There's going to be some great news coming out this year. So if you're paying attention to the podcast, you're going to be up on everything. Absolutely right, buddy. Well, let's get right into it, Keith. Let's talk about Corvette production this week at the Bowling Green Assembly Plant. Production's going strong, as it can be in this environment. We're looking about three weeks open since that March 21st weekly closure. And then we also had the plant closed Good Friday and then Easter Monday. This week, we'll actually see the 2022 model year should cross over 22,000 VINs for the model year. So that's a nice milestone. I've kind of been looking at where we're going to end up. We had some great numbers for the quarter. We're really looking, thinking about where we're going to end up for 2022 model year production of the total. There's only about 24 days left in production for the 2022 model year. And we think that they're probably going to end up somewhere close to about 26,000 cars now. There's what they can build and then what they have been building. And the two don't usually equal each other. Right. We think about 26,000, which again would be a great number for the model year. It really sets up everything for 2023, which is the 70th anniversary year. And of course, the Z06 will start as well. And speaking of Z06, there were some reports that came out of the factory that 36 CTF cars captured test fleet cars were built and have been sent off. This is one of these milestones that we've also been waiting for. The CTF cars generally represent saleable units, meaning that we're done with the EX cars, the experimental bins. We've moved to a pre-production bin that these cars can be sold once they're finished with. If that's the case, if 36 cars did get built and get out to the Corvette team, it just shows that they're really wrapping up all the testing and all the validation and moving towards the production specs as we're looking forward to Z06 starting up sometime this summer. Man, that's great news, buddy. And speaking of great numbers, GM delivered 8,811 Corvettes in quarter one of 2022. Yeah. And, you know, this is with a missed week of production. So you have to wonder, you know, would we have been close to that 10,000 mark? It would have been really close. It would have been probably 96, 98 or so. 
Again, a huge number for Corvettes in the first quarter. It was a 33.3% increase over the 6,600 that were built the year before. The goal, I think, for the Corvette team is to somehow reach about 40,000. Over the last few quarters, they did over 10,000 in the quarter. I think it was third quarter of 2021 last year. And then we've had a couple in the high eight. So they're very close to being able to do 40,000. And again, it's just whipping the supply chain into shape and making sure that we can get everything that we need to do those cars. So another great Great quarter production for Corvette. Ben, that's the one variable we have no control over is the supply chain. So if it wasn't for all the outside factors, we probably would have 40,000 cars. That would be so cool. We also found out that Chevrolet is going to extend the 22 model year one extra week, didn't we? Yeah, this is again related back to that March 21st, that weekly closure there. You know, we build about 900 cars a week. So there was 900 reasons to extend the model year for that one extra week. So what we're going to see is those owners that had a car on order will get the 2022 model that they ordered, which is, I think, always great. You want to give the customer what they ordered. That way they don't have to worry about resubmitting for 2023. And if there's price protection or if they're going to be moved to the top of the list, you know, they just get their car. Right. Now we're looking at the 2023 Corvette. Stingrays will now start production probably the week of May 16th. Although as we get closer, sometimes they'll wrap up their final cars on the Thursday or Friday before, and they might actually start a little bit early. So we'll just have to wait and see. But that's the goal right now. May 16th, we'll start the Corvette Stingrays. And then again, later this summer sometime, we'll have the Z06 start production. And also, speaking of Stingrays, we saw that the Visualizer has launched some new updates. And also the Z06 Visualizer has some updates too. Isn't that correct? Yeah, we've been waiting for this, you know, and of course we had already the first order cycle. So people were putting together cars that they didn't know what they looked like. And especially what I'm talking about is like the 70th anniversary Stingray. When Chevrolet rolled out the package for the 70th anniversary, they showed it only on the Z06. We knew what kind of look for, but you know, there's nothing like seeing it in your head and either a rendering or a visualizer. Now you can go see the 70th anniversary visualizer for the Stingray. You can play with the two different colors there. You can add stripes. The new 20 spoke wheels are shown and there's a new wheel actually that kind of surprised us. We didn't see this in the order guide, but it's a tech bronze wheel that is a LPO, meaning that it's a dealer installed option. Oh, It's tech bronze and it's a 20 spoke design. So it's the same design as you get on the 70th anniversary. It's just this bronze color, which really, really looks nice, I think. The other thing too that you can do is the 70th anniversary wheels are 20 spoke wheel there in carbon flash metallic with a edge red line around the rim while those will go on the 70th anniversary cars that's a free flow option so you can actually order those for any stingray during the model year as well so that was again another nice surprise those red line wheels look great on black cars i think because it offers that color and especially if you tie in the edge red calipers i think that just is a great look some of the other changes of course we saw a new carbon engine bow for the stingray that's something that we saw at sema last year year so that's something that's new and then we also got z06 update one of the really neat things is that there's now this jake hash mark but instead of appearing on the front fender it appears on the rear fender it's definitely an interesting look there's other things too that are changes uh, you can get your z06 badge in red you can now with the visualizer when you play with the cars you can add the racing stripes to the 70th anniversary builds and on convertibles now you can play with the black nacelles or roof options which that wasn't available before so you're getting more and more more updates to the Z06 visualize, and of course, it's happened to see the Stingray visualizer for the first time. I'm assuming that we'll probably see the build and price configurator for Stingray sometime around when production starts. That's generally when it falls. When you build out your car, it'll give you a price of all the options as well. So hopefully we'll see that soon. But yeah, this was a good week for just being able to see these and, and play with them and spin them around and what do they look like. The visualizers are a lot of fun, and we spent more than a few hours messing around with cars in them. So hopefully you have too. You picked out your perfect build for 2023. Keith, I know when it came out on CorvetteBlogger.com, I immediately went to the visualizer, and I think I looked up, and it was like a little over two hours that I was playing with the Stingray and the Z06. It's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Where did the time go? Where did the time go? Yeah, it is definitely a time suck when you're really into it and you're doing stuff. It's funny, too, because for years you'll go through and, you, you know, there's no real, I'm looking, I'm looking, but I'm not wedded to anything. But ever since the C8 came out, I love the convertibles. You know, I love some of these different options that you got to have. And so you're always trying to work those into the build and then play with the new stuff. So it's definitely a fun thing to do. Absolutely right. Also, at the National Corvette Museum, we got news that the Hot Wheels Race to Win exhibit comes in May of 2022. Yeah, this should be a fun one. It opens after the bash. It actually comes May 27th and it'll run through September 25th. 
It's a fun family-oriented display. It comes from the Children's Museum out of Indianapolis, which helped put it together. And so there's a lot of learning involved. There's a physics display. They investigate how cars can go faster. And there's things in there that you can work with to make your car go faster. And then also there's a six-lane downhill speed track. And there's a pit stop challenge. It looks like a very fun hands-on display. These things are always fun for kids to get them involved. You get a kid hooked on cars early in life, you're going to make a Corvette enthusiast for life as well. Better to get them involved. Good to see this coming. We'll be looking for that to open on May 27th. Start those kids off early, my friend. That's the way to go. That's for sure. Well, Keith, let's take our first break. And when we come back, we'll talk more about Corvette racing and Corvette rumors on the special third anniversary edition of Corvette Today. The Radiator Grill Store offers protection for your C8's front radiators and side intakes. They also carry front strut tower covers to prevent rusting and pooling water, all with do-it-yourself installation. Get 10% off your total purchase with promo code CT10. See the full line of products at radiatorgrillstore.com. MidAmerica Motor Works has been the industry leader and aftermarket supplier and manufacturer of Corvette replacement parts and accessories since 1974. We have what you need for all years and generations of Corvette. Whether you need a door panel or a seat cover for your C1 Corvette or the latest shirt, jacket, hat, or lifestyle accessory to complement your new C8, you can get it at MidAmerica Motor Works. So if you're restoring, repairing, replacing, or simply researching your Corvette, MidAmerica Motor Works is the place to go. Visit our website at mamotorworks.com and shop Corvettes by generation or specific year. Or call us Monday through Saturday, toll-free at 800-500-1500 and talk to one of our Corvette experts to help you get the right part or accessory. Pursue your passion with MidAmerica Motorworks. VetFinders.com is the Internet's original Corvette classified ads website with classified ads starting at just $25 and every ad runs until your Corvette is sold. If you're in the market for a Corvette, VetFinders.com has over 500 Corvettes for sale from all around the USA and Canada and covering all eight generations. Visit VetFinders.com, the Internet's destination for buying and selling Corvettes. That's V-E-T-T-E Finders.com. And now, back to Corvette Today with your host and my husband, Steve Garrett. Hey, thanks for listening to this special third anniversary edition of Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by Mid-America Motor Works. Car show season is here. Get your Corvette ready by shopping over 60,000 Corvette-specific parts and accessories at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me every other week is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. Don't forget, if you want a deeper dive into any of these stories we talk about on the show, you can always go to CorvetteBlogger.com. In the second section, we're going to talk about Corvette racing and Corvette rumors. First off, Keith, we have results for Corvette racing at Long Beach, don't we? It was a good week for Corvette racing, although some interesting stuff happened. This is the third race of the season, and it was the first sprint race for us. The first two are big endurance races, so now we're in a sprint race. Of course, IMSA made some more changes to balance the performance leading up to it, and we got dinged a little bit, but not too bad because of the way that Long Beach is. It's a 100-minute sprint race, and you essentially get one pit stop and the one driver change in the middle of that. So if we can get out in front, the idea was that passing is just very hard there there's only a couple places that you can pass the team really set themselves up for a fast run during qualifying and sure enough jordan taylor did get the pole position on his very last lap of qualifying it took a little bit the fuel burned off and then he was able to just snag it there at the very end once the race started then he was out in front for that first part of that race so everything's looking good we go into the pits for a pit stop and as the car left, we learned that there was an incident in pit lane. And this is the craziest thing. If you haven't seen this video, you've got to see it. So as the tire change guy, his name was Alex, he's doing the right front tire. These guns, they spin these wheel nuts at about 15,000 RPMs or so. So he spun the wheel and you see they pull the wheel gun out and the nut falls out of the end and it spins and it goes down pit lane. It hits a tire change hose or something there and it launches. It goes on top of the number nine Porsche 911. It hits the top of the roof, hits the side of the car, and then lands right in the radiator basket. You see the pit stop guys there, they've got a camera on it. So you see this nut go over the top of the car and into where the radiator is, the hot air exchanger there. 
the guy just reaches down, pulls the nut out, and throws it on the ground. But then when that nut went in there, it damaged the radiator. I think they started having leakage, and that was the end of their run for the number nine Porsche. So Corvette Racing got assigned a drive-through penalty with Antonio Garcia now behind the wheel. They were able to finish third place for the race. Tough. I mean, we were in contention to win that thing. We were out in front. Again, passing was very difficult. We had a fast enough car to keep everybody behind us. But that drive-through penalty made us go back to third place. But it was still a good points race for the team. They now lead the class, GTD Pro class, after three races. In two weeks, we'll be at Laguna Seca. So it's always the same weekend as the Bash that Corvette Racing Team will be out in California. Gotcha. Well, and also Jordan Taylor did a recap on Long Beach's weekend as well, didn't he? Yeah, we actually got two of them. The first one actually was one of his fun videos where he blames his alter ego, Rodney Sandstorm, for the wheel nut incident. He shows exactly how that happened. So if you haven't seen that yet, we highly recommend it. But then he also does another one of his behind the scenes at Long Beach. And so you see all these great racing videos, the cars in slow motion, and he gives updates from pit lane, from the team trailer of where they are. Again, just good stuff. We really enjoy Jordan's videos, and it just offers a glimpse of what's going on behind the scenes. So we definitely recommend checking both of those out. There are lots of fun in that. That incident video was really funny as well. It's just so unexpected. And I think Jordan called it. It was a fluke of an accident. I mean, you couldn't do that in the 100 years, I bet. Not if you tried, Keith. Not if you tried. That's for sure. Also, IMS got 50 Camaro convertibles for the Indy 500 Festival. That was pretty cool. Yeah, this is always exciting. I'm a former Hoosier, so April and May are always big months as we turn the focus towards the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the Indy 500. So these 50 Camaros are all done in identical Wild Cherry, which is the same as our Red Mist, I believe. These cars are the festival cars, so they'll be used by race organizers and other prominent people during the month of April and May leading up to the race. You know, they're all decked out. They have the Indy 500 logos on the side of the car. They got racing stripes, and they actually got these white seats that are very similar similar to the ceramic seats that are going in the 70th anniversary Corvettes. Huh. So our big question is, we're thinking that while the festival cars here are the Camaros, we're going to actually see the Indy 500 pace cars on the track. Hopefully it will be 70th anniversary Corvettes is what we're thinking. And we think they'll be Stingrays as well since the Z06s haven't started production yet. Right. Also, Keith, in the rumor section, we saw Taj Juchter in a C8 Z06, didn't we? Yeah, this was kind of a neat sighting. A guy pulls up. He's following this car for a little bit. Michigan always has these weird left lane turns. As he comes up and he's turning to the left there, he's got this car beside him, and he sees that it's Corvette chief engineer Taj Juchter behind the wheel. We see a couple pictures there, but the story actually gets picked up by our friend Rick Conti, who interviewed the guy, and he says that he followed Taj Park, and he and Taj had like a 20-minute conversation about the new car and everything that's going on there. A fun encounter, great for Taj to spend some time with the customer. I don't know if we're going to see Taj at the Bash this year. He might be out in California. They always do like a Corvette racing dinner out there for Laguna Seca. Anytime you can talk to the chief engineer about Corvettes, that's time well spent in our book. Absolutely right. Also, we saw a right-hand drive Z06 in a parking lot here in the United States, didn't we? Yeah, this one's filed under the category of you don't see that every day. Some guy came across a, it looked like a ceramic gray Z06 that was parked in a parking lot. When he came up closer to it, he saw that it was a right-hand drive model. We've already had the folks down in Australia confirm that the Z06 is coming there in right-hand drive configuration. They announced that the day after the reveal of the car back in October. So we know it's coming, but to actually see it, I'm sure is good news there and of course not just australia but new zealand the uk japan we'll all get these cars as well and they're turning out to be big sellers there based on the right hand drive configuration where before you know they had to drive with just the regular left hand so they didn't sell as well it's all good stuff happening there and just another indication that these cars are real and they'll be coming down under real soon that's true that's true and probably one of the biggest rumors we saw in the last two weeks there was a sketch by gm design that had everybody talking about an electric suv corvette yeah, I mean, it was obviously a racy looking drawing, but there was a very boomerang looking element that was put on the doors that makes you think, hmm, you know, I wonder why they'd be putting an air intake back there, unless it's just a, really a takeoff on making it look like the Stingray. So something to that, I know that we're going to see some sort of hybrid or an electric SUV, smaller SUV that might have some Corvette characteristics involved. Of course, a lot of the Corvette designs already carried through much of Chevrolet, the grill design, wheels, and some other things. Tail lights generally are a focus. It's not that far off the realm that we'll see an electric SUV that might have some very Corvette design characteristics with it. Very cool. Well, buddy, let's take our final break. And when we come back, we'll talk about the lighter side of Corvette on the special third anniversary edition of Corvette Today. 
Are you ready for a better insurance policy without the Corvette tax? With agreed value protection, the value of your collector vehicle will never change. Plus, you'll save money. Get a quick quote at ncminsurance.com. Hey, honey, are you awake? Mm, I am now. I can't sleep. Since turning 50, I keep dreaming of a red door and a blue door, somehow knowing there are only choices for retirement. Okay. Through the red door, we outlive our money. We have to rely on our kids. We're stuck on a fixed income. It's terrifying. Yeah, that would suck. But through the blue door, our money outlives us. We retire on our terms. Our kids stay our kids, not our caretakers. We make work optional. Yes, that's much better. That's what I want too, but what do we do? We call True Wealth and Company at 913-653-8783. They specialize in helping successful people make work optional. They're our fiduciary Blue Door personal wealth managers. Hey, where are you going? It's 3 a.m. I can't sleep. I'm going to check out True Wealth and Company online at retirewithtrue.com. That Blue Door is going to be our retirement. 913-653-8783. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Investment advice offered through True Wealth and Company, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. American Hydrocarbon is your one-stop shop for custom interior, exterior, and engine bay items for your C4 through C8 Corvette. We can help you create a custom look for your Corvette with carbon fiber or 10 different color patterns and styles. Whether it's a custom-made engine cover for your new C8 mid-engine Corvette or custom-made C4 interior upgrades, American Hydrocarbon can help you transform your Corvette into a best-in-class show car. And now we're proud to announce that we can produce and distribute officially licensed GM products for the C8 Corvette. That includes the front splitter, side skirts, engine appearance panels, and engine fluid caps. Plus, we now also carry the C8 Speedline side skirts along with the engine appearance package and high wing. Our products have been featured in VET and Corvette magazines. Give us a call, 813-476-5638. Visit our updated website at AmericanHydrocarbon.com or email us at pat at AmericanHydrocarbon.com. Let us help you make your Corvette the car you've always wanted it to be. American Hydro hydrocarbon stretch the life of your corvette's paint with nova stretch the performance protective cover from bugs to rock chips nova stretch covers protect your c5 through c8 corvette utilizing stretch fabric technology and an innovative fastening system for quick installation and easy removal and storage made in the usa for a tailored fit the patented design and breathable mesh protects your corvette without rubbing or chafing the paint like traditional covers and unlike clear film or old-time car bras, Nova Stretch provides full front-end coverage, including the grill, keeping radiators and heat exchangers clean and debris-free. Visit NovaStretch.com and use the code CorvetteToday15 to get 15% off your order. Protect your Corvette with Nova Stretch. You're listening to the Corvette Today podcast with Steve Garrett. Hey, thanks once again for listening and viewing Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by Mid-American Motorworks. Car show season is here. Get your Corvette ready by shopping over 60,000 Corvette-specific parts and accessories at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me every other week is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. And don't forget, if you'd like to learn anything more about the stories or topics we talk about, you can always go to CorvetteBlogger.com and get the full story. Keith, in this final section, we'll talk about the lighter side of Corvette. You and I were both watching Barrett Jackson last week, and we saw Rick Hendrick buy the first production C8 Z06 hardtop convertible for one million dollars yeah you know and this completes the set for him because he spent 3.6 million dollars to buy the vin 001 of the coupe this is pretty cool he's got the collection here this is the first retail version you know they don't have a vin one for the convertible because the coupes and convertibles they'll share the vin structure so the vin 01 was the coupe but then this is the first retail so whatever that comes up will be is what he gets he can build this car however he wants to unlike the coupe which was the 70th anniversary version and if you watch the video it was pretty cool. We talked to Dale Ledbetter, who works with Hendrick, and he was actually behind him there. You see him in the background. He said that it was kind of a special moment because Hendrick's grandson was there with him. Together, when Hendrick bought one of the C7Z06s, they did the engine build program together. Dale says that it looks like his grandson will also join Rick when they do the engine build on the LT6 for the Z06. So that should be fun. And again, you turn a kid into a Corvette enthusiast early, and he's going to be there for life. So great job there. 
Chevrolet does these for fundraisers and charity, and the proceeds of this auction went to the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, which supports historically black colleges and universities. Great for Chevrolet to offer this up for this charity event. Rick Hendricks stepped up and, and spent a million dollars of his money to get the car. A fun event, and glad to see it. That was really cool to watch. Also, a 1986 Corvette Pace car brought $1.76 million at Barrett-Jackson, and all that money goes to help Ukraine humanitarian relief efforts, doesn't it? Yeah, this was an auction that had the 86 pace car, and then it was combined with a modern Shelby Ford Super Snake, 700 and some horsepower. So these two cars together were offered. When the auction concluded, again, it was Rick Hendricks stepping up and adding a million dollars to that car. He got that one and the Shelby Super Snake. But what was really cool is after the auction concluded, there was a bunch of people there that also raised up their hands and said, we also want to donate above it. So they actually raised the one point seven six million dollars with seven hundred sixty thousand of that coming after the final bell rang as this was in florida our governor santis was there he got to actually start the auction and hammer it and then they had uh, actual family members of one of the people that donated the car his wife is ukrainian and so they actually have family that's come over as, as basically refugees and they were on stage as well holding ukrainian flags nice to see money raised for these refugees the money actually goes to samaritan's purse which does great work with these kind things. Again, just great to see people step up and do some good for the neighborhood out there. What a great story and what a great contribution. That was fantastic. We also found out that our friend Amelia Hartford has some more trouble with her C8 Corvette, doesn't she? Yeah, we tuned in again. She actually had her car back on the track. They've been playing with clutch setups, and they had some R&D clutches in there now. And they felt that as they were turning up the boost on the car, it was just starting to slip again. Her latest video does show all that racing action. But what happens is when they got back and they were going to actually take out those clutches and put in a new set of clutches from Sissio Performance, they found a milky white substance in their oil. So they were kind of freaking out there. Sounds like they're going to do a complete engine rebuild on the car. And actually, it's going to be at LS. Fest West in Las Vegas, April 22 to 24. So there's some big stuff happening out there. And if you get a chance to see Amelia's car, Phoenix run, that's always great to see, I think. She still says they're going for the eight second mark. They've got the third fastest time as far as we know, so they could actually do it. Good luck to Amelia. She's had a crazy run with that C8 Corvette. I hope it all turns out really, really well. Also, the Bowling Green Fire Department picked up a new C8 Corvette from the National Corvette Museum. What's the backstory on that? This is pretty cool. So they purchased the car and took delivery at the NCM. This is going to be like a public education car, but then they're going to do a raffle at the end of the year. So it's basically their annual fundraiser, public education. They'll take it to the schools and talk to the kids and things like that. This is pretty cool. The car will be given away November 19th as a raffle. And our friend Mike Furman at Criswell was instrumental in getting the allocation for the Bowling Green Fire Department on this. Pretty cool for Mike for helping out there. They had the fire department out at the museum to take delivery. They had a couple of trucks out there and got some pictures of the fire engine red Corvette in front of the fire engines themselves. Cool stuff. We're going to tune in and see that raffle in November. That was cool. It was great to see those pictures too with the fire engine and the Corvette all together. Also, we got some good news that Corvette gained a 16% market share and now they lead the premium sports car segment, don't they? Yeah, again, just shows the strength of the Corvette. And actually, the strength of the Corvette when they can build cars. In first quarter of 2021, there was only 6,600 Corvettes sold. So the market share from last year to this year went up 16%. Last year, it was 52% in the quarter. This year, it's 68% in the quarter. What's crazy is that Chevrolet sold 4,000 more Corvettes than all the other competitors combined. We're talking Porsches, we're talking Mercedes-Benz AMGs, we're talking Nissans, and we're talking Acura R8. Again, good stuff from Corvette. We expect this to probably continue throughout the rest of the year where they're just shellacking the competition in that luxury sports car segment. That was great to see. I would love shellacking those other cars, especially this is a really, really important segment, and I thought that was good to see the Corvette led the pack. Yeah, absolutely. It's always good to see that. And again, other people say, well, where was Lamborghinis and other there? These cars, they don't sell too much. I think half of Lamborghini sales these days are all SUVs with their Euros. It's an interesting market for sure. And that kind of shows why that electric Corvette might be on the horizon with Lamborghinis selling half their car sales being SUVs. Crazy stuff out there, but good to see Corvette doing well. Crazy indeed, buddy. And finally, Chevrolet launches its Corvette Z06 Academy videos. I watched some of those. They were so cool. Every time I watch those videos, I get more and more excited about the Z06. 
Yeah, this was a fun series. They did this with C8 Stingray. Started off with teasers and behind the scenes stuff. And then when the car was delivered, they actually did this whole series of how to operate it. So everything from the performance data recorder to the memory seat functions, how the trunk and the front all open and close, that kind of stuff. So I'm assuming that as we get into the production of the cars, we'll see a lot more driver specific operational type videos. But leading up into this one, we saw a nice little trailer with new stuff in it too. It's not just their rehashing the launch video this one also had a video called zora's legacy which had some footage back in the day that we hadn't seen before and then another one called purpose and promise chevrolet now actually has all these in a z06 playlist on their youtube channel so you can check that out of course we link to it from corvette blogger absolutely right well buddy thanks again for being here on corvette today and thank you so much for being such an integral part of the show as we start year number three of corvette today well i appreciate that steve i I got two more things just real quick hits here. Corvettes at Carlisle, they're looking for 1972 Corvettes for their 50th anniversary display. So if you've got a 1972 Corvette and you want free tickets to the show and want to go there, we've got the contact person on Corvette Blogger that you need to talk to. And then also we wanted to say congratulations to our friends at the Mid-Engine Corvette Forum. They just surpassed 10,000 members. Again, a huge milestone. It's a great forum, very friendly. Congratulations again to the Mid-Engine Corvette Forum for doing all that. Steve, as we wrap up, tell us what you got coming up next week. That'll be the week of the MCM Bash at the National Corvette Museum. I have Jordan Lee and Dustin Gardner. Jordan is the global chief engineer for small block engines for Chevrolet and Dustin Gardner is the assistant global chief engineer for Chevrolet for small block engines. Both of them were on the podcast together and they talk about the new Z06 LT6 engine. You know, it's one thing to read about it in Motor Trend or Car and Driver, but it's another thing to listen to the guys that made and designed the engine talk about the engine. You can hear the excitement and enthusiasm that they have. They said that the engine was seven years in development and they're so excited because now they can finally talk about it. That's coming up next week on Corvette Today. Well, that'll be a great setup for the bash because they are actually going to be at the bash as well. So yeah, listen to it, get your all your questions here in advance. And then when you see them in person, let them know that you listen to them on the Corvette Today podcast. I'm sure they'll be excited to hear that. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today. And please be sure to tell your family, friends, and other Corvette enthusiasts about the Corvette Today podcast. And also, thanks to our sponsors, MidAmerica Motorworks. Car show season is here. Get your Corvette ready by shopping over 60,000 Corvette-specific parts and accessories at mamotorworks.com. American Hydrocarbon at AmericanHydrocarbon.com. True Wealth and Company at RetireWithTrue.com. Also, Aerolari Wheels. Get $100 off your purchase with the new promo code CT111 at Aerolari.com. Also, Nova Stretch Bras. Use the code Corvette Today 15 and get 15% off your total purchase at NovaStretch.com. You've been listening to Corvette Today with Steve Garrett. If you'd like to contact Steve with any thoughts on the podcast or ideas for guests on Corvette Today, you can email him at stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. That's stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. Or connect with Steve on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using at stevegarrettdj. Thanks again for listening to Corvette Today.